that one on second. What's the best price to not University Lodge. University Lodge. University Lodge. University Lodge. Yeah. yeah. It's going to pick us up there. Ah, so and that's where the bus is going to return everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so go dress. Yeah. Go dress normal as clothes to change stuff. into. Bring a bathing suit. There might be creek swimming opportunities if time permits. So, yeah. And then photos will start at like 2. Charlie's getting there at 2. I'm not sure if she's going to do a little scouting, but we'll take some like getting ready pictures and yeah. probably search his penis. Because we're going to do the like gender thing. I don't want to get pictures. I was just like, yeah, but I yeah. Like, how was that? Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the ending, we want to line up like line up. Yeah. Don't part from one to the other. One to the other. Yeah. And are, is there a base to the exit that's similar? I think it, it'll be naturally sort of more celebratory, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 the person yeah. in front of you is yeah. coming yeah. yeah, but don't rush it. The person in front of you is like, speed walking. Just strap it there, Neil. Yeah. Um, Right. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys practice just the order again? Like, so you recognize the face of the person? So you're gonna say, yeah. Or when are you going to enter then? Um, are, when are you going to enter? The starts at 6, but you're probably welcome to pop in over there. We'll meet you after the session. I'll meet you after the session. That's a tough relationship. Parents, yeah, well, then you have to explain to your children, this isn't your house okay. anymore. You're now a guest. There's no rights. <laughs> <laughs> they don't quite you know. Just love their home. Love their home. It's hard to have a home. No, no. Those two more. Oh, wow. What is with the men? No My dad is like finally retiring. He's, he's afraid of being oh, useless. Doctor. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Well, he's afraid of I'm a, I'm a horrible, bad person. Do. I won't do anything. Yeah, so, my mom's really afraid of having <laughs> now it's her house. It's not even. It's not my house. It's not my dad's house. It's her house. Some of that, not much. No, yeah. No, I mean, yeah, but I do understand. Number, number. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Take care of that. I don't have to worry about it now. Good. Hi, Laura. Where's Uncle Wayne? Hi, Uncle Wayne. Welcome to Davis. Good. How are you doing, young man? I have
those of you who have your phones available, I'm going to give you my phone number in case you have questions. Over the course of the weekend, you can contact me. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. Thank you. And, and for food, 
Back to official announcements. <laughs> falafel, and there's falafel and vegan shawarma for vegetarians. Um, but there's also lamb kebabs, uh, shawarma, chicken, shawarma, beef. Oh, beef. Beef shawarma, chicken shawarma, and a lot of salads. So help yourselves. Thank you. Enjoy. Help yourselves in the order of your tables. <laughs> <laughs> Many, <laughs> many cycling related interests that he's had over the years. <laughs> like a lot, like a lot of times it's falling. Um, some of my other favorite stories from college. Some of us may know the great R&B artist R. Kelly. Disgrace. Don't speak. And, and Brendan, Brendan may or may not have enjoyed playing R. Kelly while preparing the house dinner. And normally the garb that would be, I know this isn't probably the most family friendly garb, but he had a kiss, he had a kiss the chef like apron, <laughs> and not always would there be anything else on but kiss the cook or chef or some sort of very yeah. And um, so those are two of my favorite Brendan stories from like from college. Um, Brendan is definitely like he. So over the years, as we get old, like I have a wife and a kid now, and I live a suburban life outside of Philadelphia or whatever. And Brendan's <laughs> gone off to to get his PhD out here in California. We don't get to talk to each other as much, and quite candidly, that sucks. Um, but that's happened with all of our our little clique from college because that's that's growing up. Um, and I got married, and it's amazing, and I am. Very happy for Brendan to be able to share that same experience. And Brendan has always been a great friend. He's been that friend that, even if you don't talk to him forever, you can kind of share some sort of shitty situation going on in your life. And he can give you some advice. And he's just always been a good, a good friend that no matter how long it's been that we talk to each other. What are you finding? Like, it's like, don't give notes on the story. It's <laughs> So, Trunch was here, Sean, Brian, Buddy, who else was in this car? I was uh, in the living room with a friend. Yeah. <laughs> so, we get to Maine, we're on some dirt logging road. This is sort of in conjunction with Alex's story about, like, clumsiness, generally, <laughs> I guess you could say. Uh, I'm tailing him in a Honda something or other. Civic. <laughs> Brendan is driving Buddy's uh, brand, Pontiac, new, beautiful, brand, brand new, new Pontiac Aztec. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is <laughs> some of you are ahead of the story, uh, and it starts fishtailing on the logging road, and it goes off to the side. And I'm driving, and I'm not really stopping. Sean's like, you should stop. <laughs> All of our friends are dead on the side yeah, of the road. Because the car is now stop. upside down in a ditch. Oh and we got out, and me and Sean had a brief moment of insane panic. That, uh, everyone would appreciate our heroism running to the car. Uh, there was, everyone was fine. Ultimately, our trip got canceled, but it felt like a very, uh, fun experience to talk about in the past. Then we got trapped in Maine for 
a week, two, two weeks, almost, and ended up eating a squirrel at one point. So, uh, from the very beginning when I knew Brendan only as man bun. To the time that they realized they were falling in love, to the negotiations of moving in together, and finally to deciding to spend their lives together. And as one of Kate's close confidants, I've been privy to a lot of the inner workings of their relationship. <laughs> so, <laughs> to many people, Kate and Brendan actually started seriously talking about marriage last March, a full six months before they were officially engaged. And at the time, I was off doing some field work, so Kate and I were furiously texting each other as we dissected every cryptic thing Brendan said. <laughs> and I asked her how she knew that Brendan was the one. And luckily, I had the foresight to screenshot her response. <laughs> problems with me. And I feel that we 100% support each other's happiness and each other's growth as people. It's not only loving his best self, but all of his selves. So Kate, my dear, I res respectfully disagree with you. I think it is super romantic. <laughs> I've heard this quote that you should take it for what it is and not what you want it to be. And that is exactly what you and Brendan have done. You have taken each other for what you are and chosen each other without any illusion that there's something more. And I can't think of anything more romantic. 
So I think as long as you continue to see each other like that for the rest of your lives, you're going to have a beautiful marriage. And I'm so happy to be here.
so you can annoy him for the rest of your life. <laughs> so we're at the Bicycle Hall of Fame, so we have Bicycle Socks. And then, for the wedding night, we have Bicycle Boxer Shorts. <laughs> Plane, so brought you a little souvenir from the bike shop. So. It's like a, uh, she's like an orchid, or like, um, like, uh, like a, a pair of socks that's inexplicably wrapped in four Amazon packages. You gotta go <laughs> dig under it. She gets the layers over there. So, um, <laughs> but when I first met her, she was just this uh, beautiful, sweet, reserved jock. I thought. <laughs> As I, as I got to know her better, she would become uh, one of the most special, unique, 
uh, strange and beautiful people that I never and, and will ever know in my entire life. Uh, so I, I just I feel really privileged. Um, I, I think most of you guys know this about Kate, but um, beyond this beautiful blonde bombshell exterior, there is this like weird sniveling nerd. <laughs> Fiction. I, I never, 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 never confirmed, but I'm pretty sure probably also writes it. Uh, uh, I, I actually, I doubt that Kate has ever watched a TV show because she reads the episode recaps and can passionately talk about teen fiction like Twilight. But if you showed her a photo of the cast, she wouldn't recognize any of them. Uh, this, this girl, uh, she devours literature like like I devour Cocoa Puffs, like messily and without a real plan of action. Uh, in college, she, she, used to, um, she used to crush on engineering professors, not in spite of their uh, sandals and socks together, but because... <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not. I'm not going to say specifics, Kate. Don't worry. We're not going to go into anybody. It, uh, Kate has a very analytical mind, so uh, I think that uh, her dating patterns before Brandon can sort of be boiled down into a formula, which was that um, a Kate would meet some uh, just totally weird antisocial uh, weirdo. Uh, <laughs> that nobody would have any interest in but Kate. B, Kate would fall hopelessly. C, this person would have never gotten any kind of attention from anybody as remotely charming and beautiful and amazing as Kate. D, add up A through C, zero sum Kate, nothing. <laughs> Which is why I was so shocked when I met her. <laughs> Curious, uh, totally a weirdo in ways that are very congruous with Kate's weirdo ways. Um, the first time I ever met Brendan, we were on uh, we were on our way to a friend's party. This was oh god, I believe uh, this was Year of Our Lord 2015. Um, when our when our biggest concern was maybe we had just been wrong about Justin Bieber for our whole lives. And it was actually, secretly a genius. Uh, we were on our way to a party and we pulled over in a Ralph's parking lot to, well, we, we were pulling over at the Ralph's to get supplies and in the parking lot, we were like, guys, would this be a really cool idea to choreograph a dance to a Justin Bieber song and not tell anybody about it and then just play it and have a choreographed dance? And Brendan was not only down for it, Brendan was innovating and inventing moves for this dance. And, and playing a pan, uh, the imaginary pan flute, and I just thought, he's the one. <laughs> so, um, I just, uh, I, I loved you from the get-go, Brendan. Kate, I, I will love you for my entire life. Uh, I love the both of you together. I want to raise a glass to two of the most beautiful weirdos I've known. <laughs> I don't know, do we have any other players? Oh, we have Sorry. Sorry, the Canadian Sorry. I went, I went so solid, I could have gone so much fun. <laughs>
relationship around optimization and plant happenstance and things that Kate and I have talked a little bit about, which is that we're constantly learning and growing and finding ways to better build life satisfaction. And I think that relationships really represent an opportunity to learn something about ourselves by interacting with others. And I've never seen a time in Kate's life and the time that I've known her for the last five years where she's more satisfied and has really like worked towards this kind of optimization. It also fits really well with the Bayesian idea, so I think that Ron does it as well. Um, but to me, it's, it's just, it's funny how in this process of exploring even beer choices for tonight, that things really kind of fell together. Moving to Germany is a big freaking deal, and it's kind of scary, and it's been really, I think kind of a, a scary, unknown uncertainty over the last several months, but everything is coming together and I think it really speaks to how if you build something and you really trust in it and you fall into it completely, despite the unknown, it really comes together and that's what I've seen in how Kate and Brendan have gotten to know each other and really love each other. It's, uh, <laughs> you get to celebrate the love of your friends, uh, but you also, I don't know, one of my favorite parts is you just, you get to share stories about them and, and what you love about them, you just get to publicly uh, express your admiration, and you also get to publicly embarrass them. It's just, it's just the best. It's so fun. Um, <laughs> so Kate and I met in college, and um, Kate is actually, she's one of my absolute favorite types of people. Um, some, some people, they just, they come at you and they, they just hit you like a ton of bricks. Uh, and like, I'm, I'm like one of those people, I kind of like hit you like a ton of bricks. Kate, Kate is not one of these people. Kate is, uh, Kate, Kate kind of saves parts of herself and, and, uh, and reveals herself slowly to you, which I, I really love. It's like a, uh, She's like an orchid, or like um, like uh, like a, a pair of socks that's inexplicably wrapped in four Amazon packages. You gotta go <laughs> dig under it because of the layers that are there. So, um, <laughs> but when I first met her, she was just this uh, beautiful, sweet, reserved jock. I thought. <laughs> As I, as I got to know her better, she would become uh, one of the most special, unique, uh, strange, and beautiful people that I ever and, and will ever know in my entire life. Uh, so I, I just I feel really privileged. Um, I, I think most of you guys know this about Kate, but um, beyond this beautiful blonde bombshell exterior, there is this like weird sniveling nerd. <laughs> Fiction. I, I never, 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 never confirmed, but I'm pretty sure probably also writes it. Uh, uh, I, I actually, I doubt that Kate has ever watched a TV show because she reads the episode recaps and can passionately talk about teen fiction like Twilight. But if you showed her a photo of the cast, she wouldn't recognize any of them. Uh, this, this girl, uh, she devours literature like like I devour Cocoa Puffs, like messily and without a real plan of action. Uh, in college, she, she, used to, um, she used to crush on engineering professors, not in spite of their uh, sandals and socks together, but because... <laughs> Um, I'm not. I'm not gonna say.
say specifics, Kate. Don't worry, we're not going to go into anybody. It, uh, Kate has a very analytical mind, so uh, I think that uh, her dating patterns before Brandon can sort of be boiled down into a formula, which was that um, A, Kate would meet some uh, just totally weird, antisocial uh, weirdo. Uh, <laughs> that nobody would have any interest in but Kate. B, Kate would fall hopelessly. C, this person would have never gotten any kind of attention from anybody as remotely charming and beautiful and amazing as Kate. D, add up A through C, zero sum Kate, nothing would have happened. Which is why I was so shocked when I met her. Totally a weirdo in ways that are very congruous with Kate's weirdo ways. Um, the first time I ever met Brendan, we were on uh, we were on our way to a friend's party. This was oh god, I believe uh, this was Year of Our Lord 2015. Um, when our when our biggest concern was maybe we had just been wrong about Justin Bieber for our whole lives and was actually secretly a genius. <laughs> party and we pulled over in a uh, Ralph's parking lot to, well, we, we were pulling over at the Ralph's to get supplies and in the parking lot, we were like, guys, would this be a really cool idea to choreograph a dance to a Justin Bieber song and not tell anybody about it and then just play it and have a choreographed dance? And Brendan was not only down for it, Brendan was innovating and inventing this dance and, and playing a pan, uh, the imaginary pan flute and I just thought, <laughs> so, um, I just, uh, I, I loved you from the get-go, Brendan. Kate, I, I will love you for my entire life. Uh, I love the both of you together. I want to raise a glass to two of the most beautiful weirdos I've known. <laughs> I don't know, do we have any other players? Oh, we have Sarah. Who's the story? The Canadian story? I went, I went so soft. I could have gone so much fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm normal. They had to come to the wedding. I, you know, I, I didn't invite them. At any rate, I've been sitting here listening to all this babble, <laughs> all this trash, Enough. and be frank. I don't know what the hell Brendan they're talking about. How <laughs> my boy? <laughs> yes, it is. At any rate. And Megan are the issue of my loin. <laughs> Speaking biblically. <laughs> and I've warned Kate about backing up. Now, to further illustrate, I will introduce Big P standing. Big P. Little P sitting, now standing. That's little P, and I'm middle P. We are the three Barrett boys. And by tomorrow, after you say I do, you'll be saying I wish I didn't. <laughs> As I said, I'm quite shocked. <laughs> At any rate... <laughs> At any rate, Brendan was a prodigal son. Both Brendan and Megan are accomplished Irish dancers, so they'll have to perform tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.
In any event, uh, I had to come up with a story about Brenda. Right. Brenda was young, Megan was young. And when they both get disinterested in everything, they read. Now, my older brother and I are voracious readers. So one day, we're all three of us, Brenda and Megan and I are laying in bed. I read the book, Megan's reading the book, and Brenda is illiterate and has got a book upside down and she's trying to read it. <laughs> They're all laying there in bed thinking, and Brenda says to me, or Megan said to me, why doesn't mommy read? And I said, she can't. <laughs> she's illiterate. And Megan goes, no. I, she said, I see her reading the magazine. I said, she's not reading. She's just looking at the pictures. So they went through life for about four years thinking her mother was illiterate. <laughs> And to this day, they're not sure. And to this day, they're not sure. So they, when they were both young, we told them the story that they both had twins. And I said, Brendan, you had a twin brother. And he said, what happened to him? And he said, we ate him. I said, why? I said, he was heavier than you. There's a lot more stories than a camping trip in the 100 mile wilderness that I will bore you with that. But I wish you luck. Hate, it's your last warning. I'm not saying anything else. All right, I will appear as a witness in the divorce trial. I'm saying that I warned, I'm defending Brendan, not you. No. I'm saying I warned you, all right? But I wish you both happiness. I wish you luck. I wish you love. Children that you can take together and mold and form and screw up like all of the parents. <laughs>
apothecary. <laughs> <laughs>